Well, good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. It is, if you haven't figured it out, Reformation Sunday. We are celebrating October 31st is actually Reformation Day. Um, and uh, this is the 500th anniversary of the year um, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the door of the Wittenberg, Germany uh, church in 1517. And so we're going to have a special uh, service of lessons and chorales. So if you're familiar with the lessons and carols of Christmas time, we're going to do lessons and chorales today. Um, we're going to remember the five great doctrines called the solas. And then we'll be responding to them with, Christ with scripture and song. So I'm, uh, your bulletin this morning is very important. You'll basically follow along and uh, read the bolded parts. I'm going to read a little from the introduction here. A little bit about the Reformers. They were not only concerned with the doctrine, but with Reformation and Reforming worship as well. And so we'll, we experience this every Sunday, the reforms that took place, uh, which included centering on the role of Christ as sole mediator, services in the language of the people. Uh, services had been in Latin, and so the people did not understand it. Simplified and more understandable order of service, also making it more um, uh, connectable for the congregation. Lifting up the place of preaching to share practical messages for daily guidance. Now you may or may not feel that need is met during the weeks, but uh, that is our aim, to preach practical messages for daily guidance the participation of the people in worship. And this is what liturgy means. Liturgy means the work of the people. And so we do liturgy because that gave uh, the congregation an opportunity to participate. Otherwise, um, way, way back in the 1500s, it was more of a uh, one person participating and the congregation receiving. Um, I lost my place. The other place that uh, uh, congregations became more participatory was congregational singing, which we'll do a lot of today. Mostly one and two verses, so please take note of which verse we're singing. We pray that today's worship will be a blessing to you and as we give glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us join in the confession and absolution. Uh, those of you that are longtime Lutherans may recognize this from the old green hymnal. If that means anything to you, you'll know this one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment of silent reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, 
Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You'll note what we have next is called the Litany of Reformation. There'll be the parts I read, Psalm 46, and you'll respond from Psalm 46, and then all sing. We'll sing a verse from uh, A Mighty Fortress, and then it'll be read. Respond, a verse from Mighty Fortress. That's why I had you sit. It'll take a while and uh, don't want you standing the whole time. Get comfortable and enjoy this celebratory song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble.
the river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Potter, God speaks and the earth melts. Come behold the works of the Lord. that the Lord is God. God is exalted. God. God is exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. With you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. There it is where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So as I mentioned earlier, we will be sharing in the five, five basic doctrines of the Reformation, uh, which include the writings of Martin Luther, from whom Lutherans uh, claim their heritage. Uh, other contemporary reformers were Zwingli and Calvin. And from those three, you will find most of our denominations that you know of today, including uh, United Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Anglicans, um, Baptists, Assemblies of God, all can trace their heritage to these reformers. And these reformers, in one way or another, shared some doctrines. The solas. This is Latin, sola scriptura, the scriptures alone. The Bible is our ultimate authority for understanding God, salvation, and how we are to live our lives. All matters of theology and doctrine are to find their source in scripture. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. I've had my Reformation uh, met today. That is my favorite Reformation song. Uh, just love it. Our next sola is sola Christus, through Christ alone. God has given us the ultimate revelation of God's self to us by sending Jesus Christ. Only through God's gracious self-revelation in Jesus do we come to a saving and transforming knowledge of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
can pick up the rest in two months. Sola Gratia, by grace alone. Salvation cannot be obtained through human effort. It is only by the unmerited grace of God that we have a means of forgiveness and justification to restore our relationship with God. Truly, then, we are saved by grace alone, without works or other merit. Sola fide, by grace alone, Justifi by faith alone. Justification is the act of God by which God declares sinners to be righteous because of Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. We respond to God's gracious salvation through personal trust in the Redeemer, not by our works but rather by faith in Christ's provision on our behalf, do we enter into the blessings of eternal life. Yes. Yet we know that a person is justified Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. To God alone be the glory. All things, including the justification of sinners and the lives of believers, are created for the purpose of bringing glory to God. 
God has created and redeemed us in order to display the glory of God's majesty and mercy, the wonders of God's greatness and grace. Now to him... Stand for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the holy spirit and the virgin mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. We pray for the unity of your church. Free us to be Christ's one body, graciously receiving his life and boldly offering it to a world in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of creation, for a shared, plentiful harvest, for lands unable to bear fruit, for what is neglected or destroyed by our hand, and for the earth's advocates. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations of the world, for leaders of villages, cities, states, and nations, for lawmakers and judges, for teachers and students, and for all who work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who seek refuge and strength, refugees, the imprisoned, and those bound by addictions or burdened by guilt. We pray for the ill or injured, especially Jim Dowell, Charlie Dahl, Barbara Schneider, Wayne Biggs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for continual reformation in this and every assembly, in new beginnings, in part wisdom, in established traditions, inspire creativity, 
in all ministries, revive our hope in the one who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your saints, united with them in the covenant of baptism. Increase our faith in your promised life for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You may be seated now for the offering of gifts.
God of life. You give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared and all is ready. You may come forward when the ushers indicate and you may kneel or stand as you are able along the railing. You'll receive the bread and then either uh, dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. And there are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know that you need those. Come, let us eat.
invite you to stand as you are able. Receive the blessing of post-communion. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for a time of announcements. There are a few people with announcements this morning. I think there's at least three. So I'll let you come forward. I don't know if this is on. Is it on? It's on. Is it on? Okay. Yep. I want to remind you again about the hunger advocacy meeting again tomorrow night at Brentwood Library at 6 o'clock. Learn what you can do about hunger. It will last about an hour and a half. And we are asking those participants, please, to bring some canned goods or non-perishable food items for cross lines. Second announcement. Please notice out in by the front doors, there's a Sunday school display. For the past several weeks, Messiah's children have been studying Martin Luther. And we culminate today with a Reformation celebration. And they have made bookmarks for the congregation. So please take your bookmark and remember, we have a special gift. We're Lutheran, and we celebrate that today. I have two things. One, you may have most noted a poster as you came in. I'm part of Mid-America Singers. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary this Sunday, or this, this concert season. And our first concert is this Sunday at Immaculate Conception Church. Uh, it's our 50th anniversary season, so we've been in business for 50 years. It's pretty amazing, and in honor of that, we have a guest conductor, a fellow named Z. Randall Stroop from Oklahoma State University. He is um, originally from Colorado. He made his first composition when he was 10. <laughs> It was a unique experience to rehearse with him yesterday. And this is a free concert. All of the music we're singing today will be written by, or has been written by, Z. Randall Stroop. Very interesting. Uh, and there's also a dedicated piece in honor of our 50th anniversary. Uh, Immaculate Conception Church is at the corner of Primrose and Fremont, 3 o'clock free concert. Second thing, my name is David Seward and I am part of this 2017 nominating committee. I guess I was kind of forced into it. You do this, okay? <laughs> There's six of us. Uh, me, Ed Donnell, Josh Dimick, Margaret Shelton, Nadine Milgren, who just spoke with you a moment ago, and Bobby Pettit. We are searching for candidates for the church council beginning next year, 2018, okay? The vote will be made November 19th, I believe. It's a congregational meeting, okay? So we need some candidates. We have some already. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't shine up, okay? We have need of people who make 
decisions and will help guide us in the years to come. Okay? The second thing is there is a Synod Assembly June 7th through 9th in Lindsborg, Kansas. So if you want to attend the, the Synod Assembly there, then you can come along. There's already a couple that selected for that, they volunteered for that. So, you know, if you want any answers, they can certainly help you. A couple of days, you know, they're in Lindsborg. The third group we're looking for is a 2018 nominating committee. You get to search diligently and coerce people into being candidates for the next year's vote. So let me know, or one of those people, and you may be accosted. You just, so brace yourself, okay? Thanks. <laughs> One more. <laughs> and just to note, today there is a Reformation dinner at 12.15, so please come back for that. I, I can manage to hold on. Okay. Because uh, i got to hold on to is that something here. Uh, hello. Uh, I, I had to write down a couple things because uh, I want to talk for s several min minutes here. Uh, so, so bear with me just a second here. Uh, uh, notice it may be kind of unusual, but uh, my, my name is Eric Schlachter. That's a good German name, uh, but it used to be O Schlachter when they are in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's only for the Irish part of me, though. Uh, really, the, the Schlachters were from the Black Forest in, in uh, the southern part of uh, the Baden-Württemberg province. Anyway, I want to uh, 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 say, say uh, for, first of all, like St. Paul, uh, a word from him that I bring you greetings from Rome. Uh, and uh, I've attended services here several times, and I just found the, the warmest Christian welcome. Uh, on my second uh, visit, a number of people were already calling me by name, including the ones, all the ones, serving around the altar, uh, or uh, I guess that's what you call it, or the table of the Lord. Uh, anyway, uh, um, uh, it gives me a sense of belonging that I really treasure. I, I should tell you now, though, that your, your church will have to be for me a home away uh, from home. Uh, I especially want to thank Ed and Vicki Donnell. They're here somewhere, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. out there, I guess. Uh, they they uh, especially have showed me kindness and welcome, as has your pastor and, and the others that have served as interim. I've ended to some of you uh, both about my connections to Lutherans uh, in the past as well as my connections to Catholicism. Uh, I'm uh, more than just any Catholic. Uh, I was ordained uh, to the Catholic priesthood in St. Louis in 1981. I served as a pastor in several towns uh, a few hours to the north of here. Uh, it really wasn't my uh, decision, but my bishop decided, kind of for health reasons, that I should be put out to pasture, as you might say. Uh, and uh, uh, I've got a couple of neurological disorders that, that really slow me down on occasion. Uh, and uh, particular trouble with eating and particular trouble with standing very long too, Pastor. Uh, but anyway, uh, I do hope that there uh, is an open door to cooperation and mutual affection between our churches. I attended a seminary in Columbus, Ohio. Our seminary there was in a consortium with the Methodist Seminary, Modesto, and with the Lutheran Seminary, which was downtown in Columbus. Uh, and uh, so I took uh, uh, church history uh, at the uh, Methodist Seminary. And our professor there spoke of various leaders of Protestantism over uh, the, the course, uh, as the course proceeded. And he would bring in with him, uh, uh, when he would introduce a new uh, leader of Protestantism, he'd bring in with him one of the first editions of their books. 
uh, and I asked him, I said, would you do me the kindness of letting me know uh, a week ahead of time when you're going to start talking about Martin Luther? And he did. And uh, I came to class early that day and opened out on his desk uh, a, a volume. It was a first edition, uh, right at 500 years old, of the works of Martin Luther. Just the first volume, let, let you know, because there were about 30 volumes. And this book was about this thick, and it was a heavy German tome, it was. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, founder of our uh, seminary, Joseph Jessing, acquired uh, this in uh, Europe in the 1870s. Uh, and uh, he, he said I got an A for the course anyway, because he was mm -hmm. kind of stunned to see something 500 years old open on his desk. Uh, but uh, I think uh, that uh, gives me a sense of, uh, uh, in other ways, too, connections to uh, Lutheranism. And so uh, uh, I think of that and I think of uh, many other uh, uh, connections to, to Luther, Lutheranism. But, but I, I want to t tell you that there's, there is much that has divided us over the years. Uh, and uh, there has been a lot of suffering on, on both sides, a lot of death on both sides uh, for the faith. Uh, and uh, I think of my father, uh, my late father, he was just vehemently anti-Catholic. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, well, I won't go into some of the ways that he expressed that because it was uh, sometimes uh, even violent in terms of his anti-Catholicism, and it led to a lot of suffering for our family, uh, that, and particularly for my mother. Uh, she's now 87, and it's fallen to me, despite my handicap, to pretty much be the primary caregiver for her. Uh, and she was a wee bit distressed that I, she, when I told her I was coming here this morning uh, because of some of that suffering. Uh, but uh, I think, too, that there's been an awful lot of uh, uh, things that we share in common. Uh, I um, uh, was in uh, Scandinavia uh, some years back and uh, attended Lutheran service. Uh, th that's about all there are in Scandinavia, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, with his friends of mine there. Uh, and um, of course, the service was in Finnish, so I didn't understand very much. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, what I did notice uh, was I didn't note much of any difference, but uh, if, if the language had been another language that I wouldn't have understood, you could have told me I was in the Catholic Church otherwise, because uh, everything seemed very, very familiar. Uh, and especially the fact that the vestments the pastor was wearing were just like what I had hanging back in my closet back in Missouri, just exactly like. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, but you can't always recognize it, but you know when they start that, Vater unter der Bistin dem Himmel, Geheilig werden ein Name, I could say it in German, but in Finnish, I could recognize it. That has to be the Lord's Prayer, so I joined along with him and prayed that. Uh, and uh, I think of so many other things uh, that we share in common. Uh, in Jerusalem, I uh, visited the Lutheran uh, church. Uh, it's called the Lerza Kirche there, uh, the Redeemer Church. Uh, it was um, a church in the Middle Ages for German uh, pilgrims to uh, right in the heart of the old city. Uh, but it, um, uh, it had fallen into ruin. Kaiser Wilhelm uh, made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Uh, and he uh, uh, purchased that site uh, and uh, largely endowed the, the reconstruction of a church there, uh, the Erlerza Kirche. It has a very large bell tower uh, that, that towers above a lot of the old city. Uh, of course, uh, you just have, I have to go up high places, so I had to go up the bell tower and hear the organ playing in the, in the Erlerza Kirche. Uh, and, um, um, uh, otherwise, I, 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 I want to get back to a couple of things to be sure I mentioned some things. Um, uh, you know, perhaps, that Pope Francis traveled to Lund, Sweden uh, in the past year to uh, participate in the opening events of the celebration of the 500 years uh, since the Protestant Reformation began. Uh, and I think of that, and I think of a joint uh, declaration uh, on justification 
by, by uh, our two churches together uh, that has uh, bridged a lot of gaps. Uh, and uh, I, I hope that there's more of those kinds of things. Um, and uh, actually, I think that's pr probably about enough. I think of, uh, you know, there was a mention of different saints in one of your prayers. Uh, I got to meet uh, the Holy Father, John Paul. Uh, I think of him as one of the ones that especially did a lot to, to bridge a lot of the gaps. In his meeting in Assisi with people, leaders from all over. Uh, and uh, there's Catholics that roundly condemned him for it. But I, I think if that's a, a good step forward, and I hope there's more uh, steps forward. Uh, and uh, thank you for your time, Pastor. God thank bless you. you all. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I know any saying when I was in Africa, even though I didn't know Swahili, I knew immediately when they were doing the Lord's Prayer, when they said the Apostles' Creed, you just, it, it sounds familiar in any language. You, the syncopation, something about it. Um, and also noted how similar our worship was um, being at Lutheran churches, following the liturgy, um, that you could just... Uh, worship along, even though you didn't know the language. There's one more very important thing to talk about today. Quick, um, there are sign-ups outside, and there are uh, folks from the uh, transition team that has been meeting pretty much every Tuesday for the last couple months. Um, and the sign-ups are for cottage meetings, and you may wonder what that is. And it's an opportunity for some small group conversations about... Uh, basically, it's about who are we now and who will be a fit for us as a pastoral leader in the future. So there will be some guiding questions um, to get conversation going. And uh, there are meetings. There's a couple at church. There's uh, quite a few at people's homes. We tried to divide it up by uh, areas so that you could find one near to where you lived. There's morning ones. There's evening ones. Please check that out at the table right out there and sign up. Uh, this, is, this is a major opportunity to really um, uh, have some discussion and, and uh, voice your uh, hopes, dreams, concerns, all of that in this conversation. And so please sign up for those. Also, in the back of your bulletins, you'll see morning blessing, evening blessing, some information just on Lutheran tradition, the, what the uh, Lutheran coat of arms seal means, and um, that's just some interesting stuff to learn. Please stand and receive the benediction. This is a benediction that is found in uh, nearly all of our Lutheran hymnals through the years. Uh, it's a beautiful benediction and prayer, a prayer that you can pray at any time, especially a time of discernment. I think this is a wonderful prayer for that. Oh God, you have called us, your servants, to venture, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thanks be to God. It didn't show up. <laughs> My mic's on. <laughs>